Good morning, Springfield First. I just wanted to say hi to you this morning and check in, see you if you're doing okay. I hope, pray that all of you are. Um, down here in my basement in my uh, makeshift office uh, where I've been for the last several weeks. Uh, but just wanted to kind of check in with you and see how you're doing. Uh, I pray that uh, all is going well with you. Um, as we kind of, I don't know if you're like me or not, but kind of settling into this whole uh, new normal, if you will. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, it's just kind of becoming the new routine for us. And uh, man, I, I'm really praying that uh, when May comes, that we'll be have these restrictions uh, lifted and that we'll be able to get and get back to life as we know it and life is normal, the old normal, not this new normal. Um, but uh, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be beyond that? Uh, do you think it's going to keep going? I, I, you know, June, I, I'm thinking about teen camp. I really am praying that uh, we'll be able to go to teen camp down Camp Table Rock at the end of June. But uh, who knows at this point? Uh, but uh, be, but know this, you know, be encouraged that uh, God is still in control. You've heard me say that a bunch of times, I know. Um, but I, I, I want to just help you, remind you and remind myself that in all of this, God is in control. Uh, none of this has caught him off of guard. None of this is a surprise to him. And so we just need to trust him. And then this morning, uh, reading uh, the book of Hebrews, you know, I read the first, uh, the t tenth chapter, but the first ten verses um, just talk about sacrifice. It talks about the old sacrificial system for the Jews and every year how they had to uh, offer a sacrifice for the atonement of their sins. And, and at the end, uh, in, in uh, verse 10, it says, And by that we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. You know, aren't you thankful? You know, I, I know Easter was a few days ago, but um, now, but uh, for the Christian, Easter's never over, right? We, we get to live in the power of the resurrection. That's, that's kind of the hope and the, and the meaning of Easter for us as followers of Jesus. So Easter's really never over for us. And I'm still, my mindset is really still in, in about Easter and thinking about Easter. And, and I'm so thankful that we do not have to give uh, offer sacrifices like they did uh, back then before uh, Jesus' uh, death and resurrection uh, for the atonement of our sins. He became our sacrifice once and for all. Yeah, the blood of Jesus, you know, that's why we celebrated communion last Thursday night, the Monday Thursday service, and why we do that uh, from time to time in church. We do this in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. His blood cleanses us from the sins, and I'm so thankful for that. But in that uh, tenth chapter, in those, in that within those ten verses, it talks about God saying, "Sacrifices and offerings, He did not is not what He desired. Um, you know, He nor were He ple nor was He pleased uh, with those things. It's not God doesn't want sacrifice and, and burnt offerings. What He wants is obedience." Verse nine. Then He said, "Here I am. I have come to do Your will." That is what God wants from us to do. His will. And what is His will, you may ask? Well, start at the basics. To love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. How's that going for you during this quarantine? Are you spending time with Him? Are you, are you developing new routines that include Him uh, in, in worship? And, and uh, you know, I, I know going to church on Sunday mornings is certainly different now. Uh, I miss singing out loud for the sake of my family when we're worshiping. I sing. Uh, but I don't sing. I don't sing as loud as I do in church, you know. And I, again, I'm just you know trying to be nice to my family, I guess. But you know, I, I miss singing out loud. You know, really just letting it go. So I do that in my car. If I, if I have to go somewhere in my car, that's what I'm really trying to get that out of my system and really just be able to praise God like that. But I hope that during this quarantine, you're finding new rhythms and new uh, opportunities to spend time with God, to love Him with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the second, it's just like it, right? To love your neighbor as yourself. How's that going? Are, are you able to, um, are, are you praying for and looking for opportunities to love your neighbor as yourself? You see, that's what God is wanting from us. He wants us to walk in obedience to him. Um, and, and, and remember this, anything that God asks us to do, you know, in, in obedience, is for our own good as well. It, it's not just him trying to dictate and control our lives. It's what's best for us. 
It's what's best for those around us. When God says, I want you to tell others about me, it's not just to see if, we're, if we love them enough or if we'll trust them enough to do it. That, that's maybe part of it. But it's also so for those around us that they can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. They can be exposed to that hope uh, that I talked about on Easter Sunday. And so I hope today that you are encouraged, that you are reminded that God is absolutely positively in control, that he loves you, that he has a plan for you, and man, that he wants you just to walk in obedience. And as this new normal settles in around us, take advantage of it. Find opportunities. You know, one of the things that's really cool, I'm hearing all these testimonies about how God is using this. Um, how God is using the, the, the church as being more creative uh, than ever in terms of getting its message out and, and, and you know, live streaming and driving churches and all these different things. And, <coughs> and uh, viewership is up. You know, uh, on Palm Sunday, I haven't seen the numbers yet from this week, but on Palm Sunday, we had 530 views of our service uh, for Palm Sunday between YouTube and Facebook. You know, that that's more people. I don't know the last time or if we've ever had 500 people in our sanctuary. You know, so... God is using this. Don't be fooled into thinking that we're being pushed into a box and that, you know, we, God is using this. As we're trying to be faithful and getting the message out, God is being faithful and he's exposing more people. One organization, they do a big uh, online, and they've done this for years, they do an online Easter service and they do a, a gospel presentation. And they said last year, which was the most ever up to that point, they had 3,900 people accept Christ. That is amazing. But this year, uh, with their online presence, they, they broadcasted it. They had over six, uh, what was it, 69,000 people accept Christ online from around the world that, that indicated, you know, in, in messaging back with them that they had accepted Christ. So please don't believe the, uh, the devil's lies that uh, the church is being shut in the box and we're being held back. And no. God is using this to do incredible things. And as a church, our challenge is then how can we capitalize on that in the sense of, you know, going forward, even when the restrictions are lifted, how can we be creative in making sure that more people are hearing, <coughs> excuse me, the good news of Jesus Christ. So be encouraged. Know that you are loved. Uh, the God, the creator, loves you. He gave his life for you. And know that you are loved. I, I love you. Our, our church, we love each other. And we're here for each other. If you need something, please don't hesitate to ask. And know that uh, you are loved today. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.